of Nokia Siemens. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for this opportunity. Sure. I want to talk to you a little bit about the fact that there's so much conversation nowadays about the smart grid and how there's so many issues and challenges that the smart grid industry is currently facing right now and that there's lots of discussion on ways to, you know, tackle a lot of these issues. Um, but there's not as many people that are actually putting their heads down and trying to implement and just focus on getting these problems solved. Give me some of your thoughts about do you agree with that statement and or not and if you do or don't you know why why you think the way that you do. Ah, that's a, that's a good good question indeed and 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 I have lived through the IT revolution 20 years ago, uh, cellular revolution 10 years ago. And I think to start with, there are a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities with the challenges and, and uh, what we are facing now with smart grid. And, and coming from uh, Nokia Siemens networks have a strong heritage in telecommunication and now, now through Siemens from energy, it's, it's kind of natural to find ways to combine these two words, two worlds that how we can utilize our key learnings from, from uh, wireless industry and ICT industry in this smart grid stand transformation. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, there is a lot of transformation from the wireless industry into smart grid, but are you, are you really recreating the wheel or are you able to take, take some of existing technologies and implement those yeah, into that, these solutions? Exactly, that's a great, great, great point, Ben, that, that really our approach in our innovation project, how we call the project, where we are com combining a kind of business opportunities uh, with technology enablers, is really not reinvent the wheel, but see what we already have, what are the telecom assets, ICT assets, and how we can utilize these assets in, in a smart grid space. And if I start with a concrete example, the one of the, um, the we did with the Irish startup called Sevosnet two years ago. And, and really the story goes like, like we have many base stations or, or, or cellular network elements and we have created the open element management uh, software platform to manage these things. Where can we find similarities in smart grid space. We have windmills, we have solar panels, we have distributed generation. And, and then we run a kind of innovation project where this startup built a windmill uh, farm um, management application on top of our, our software platform. And now it's up and running in Ireland and, and in Washington state in in US. And exactly the same software platform where we have invested 10 years, hundreds of uh, manpowers to create the platform. So what, what, give me some learnings that you guys got out of a project like that. Were you able to apply existing technology for wind? What are some of the things that have come out of that that say, well, we can do this same thing for other clients in other parts of the world? I think the key learning is, as I said, that do not reinvent the wheel. That, uh, and, and of course it all starts the way you develop software nowadays. It's, it's built on uh, open uh, standards, open interfaces and platforms when, when it's easy to integrate other software compon components and application on top of that. How much, how much does tackling the type of wind generation issues or solutions that are out there, how much of that is part of the portfolio of essentially what you guys want to be part of at the end of the day? There's a lot of opportunities. I think the wind, wind farms and wind energy is one of the fastest growing, growing in renewables. The other good example is that, if I continue, is that here we utilized our element management platform. But the other good example is, is the charging and, and, and tariffing platform. 
and and we we have learned and and uh, there's a lot of discussion about smart meters but what will happen after you have the meters in place how to utilize the meters how to utilize the data and here we comes close to what we are so used in telco world is flexible tariff and different uh, tariffing systems and policies and and the cust individual customer experience and we are introducing the same to energy world through, for instance, one one uh, innovation project we did in in Philippines, it's about prepaid energy. Okay. That 95 percent of our telco customers, new customers in Southern America or India or China or Indonesia, they are prepaid customers. And and the same way they buy nowadays energy, but they just used some card or tokens or others to buy their energy. Why not to use your mobile phone? and the same kind of prepaid. And here the idea was to utilize our charge at once platform, and do that then together with local, local uh, utilities and operators. And that's, that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool thought because there are a lot of, like some of the countries you've just mentioned, but there is a lot of the world that is very used to the prepaid behavior. Yep. Yeah, and, and here, once again, it's not just the technology, but the ease of use and how you, how you introduce this to the customers. It's, they are, they are so used to use that, how they, how they used prepaid voice, prepaid data, prepaid energy. And there is a certain percentage of the market here in the States that is used to a prepaid yeah. platform. But of course, prepaid is just one example. I think here in U.S. it's more like than flexible tariff, that how now utilities can, can, can approach their customers like, like cellular carriers, offering your flexible tariffs and different kind of tariff schemes and, and bonus programs, you name it. And all this comes to picture when you have a demand response and, and this kind of advanced smart grid solution. How, how much of an impact or how, how much faster does, does an implementation of like yours, at least for um, uh, electric vehicle infrastructure and, and the sort, how much of that do you really think advances the understanding and education of electric vehicle infrastructure to the end user? These end users are being hit with messages all the time about how they really need to, to move forward to this kind of stuff. But to be able to find behaviors that they're used to, going back to your mobile example, you really think that helps them say, okay, these are the types of things that we can now apply for the energy space. Let's end up buying our, our energy you know, prepaid and definitely, a lot faster. Definitely, definitely. Good, Ben, you mentioned this um, e-mobility or electrical vehicle topic. And that's a kind of the third example I would like to share with you. And here it's like, like you are roaming with your mobile phone. Nowadays, it's, it's, it's a fact of life. You can roam, you can make your calls, any city you are, any, any country you are, you are roaming. But that was not the case 10, 20 years ago. You need calling cards or quite complicated system to, to make the call happen. And the same will be with your EVs in the first place, where you are charging your, your, your EV and whose energy you are kind of fueling in. But this is another innovation project we are running in, in Europe with the Finnish utilities and German utilities, that how you can first do the clearing house between different utilities, how you can do the identity management when you plug in your car, who you are, whose energy you are, uh, what is the tariffing scheme. Once again, the identity management, billing, charging, and then this roaming uh, system. And all this based on technologies and solutions we have developed for the telco world. Seppo, I'd like to get your thoughts on the differences that you see in the market conditions for United States innovation in clean, clean tech and smart grid compared to innovation in Europe for clean tech and smart grid. I mean, there's a lot of different moving factors and differentiating factors that, that we deal with here in the States compared to uh, Europe and other parts of the world. How are you guys able to really leverage what some of these differentiating, differentiating factors are in Europe to be able to get some of these projects out there that you might not necessarily be able to successfully implement in a U.S.-based US project? That's a good question indeed. I, I think the underlying needs or challenges and problems are the same. How to plug in renewables, how to enable electrical vehicles, how to scope with aging infrastructure, 
how to be able to invest in bits instead of uh, copper, and how to make the grid reliable. A lot of talk about security, cyber security, how to ensure the customer privacy. I think these b big issues are the same. But even inside of Europe, there's a huge variation between different countries, and I, I think the same in US. But for instance, being here in California, I think the California and uh, utilities as a forerunner here, it's pretty much the same things we are talking about and implementing in Europe. Of course, the standards are different, and maybe the competitive landscape is different because of the deregulation and, and, and others. But basically, I think that, that the same problems we are solving. And that's why you guys are playing in the American markets, because there's a lot of good learnings here as well, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. And maybe the drivers, drivers are pretty much the same all over the world. They are just in different, different order, whether it's uh, um, in environment or CO2 reductions, whether it's the uh, security of supply or aging infrastructure. I think that the top five are the same, but maybe in different order. And, you know, it's all about then, then in energy politics and other highly regulated markets. So. Sure. Why does this industry interest you? Why have you chosen to spend time in this space and tackle some of these problems that, that you know, the world is essentially facing today? And this kind of personal question? Yeah, personal. Yeah, yeah. that's it. What to say? I think having spent last 20 years in ICT and telco industry, I think the beginning to connect people. That, that, that was the mission. Now it's, it's there, it's everyday life. And I think now the next challenge is, is we all talk about environmental issues. It's doing the right thing. And at the same time, I heard you use the word turning green to green, to create new business and by creating new business, new growth for Nokia Siemens and this industry as well, doing the right thing. I think that's a, and solving some of the biggest problems in the world related to energy, I think that motivates.